actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Live from Sunset Gower Studios, The Amazing Hour with Joanne O'Brien and Sabrina Johnson. There's a power here within me. There's a strength that's deep inside. If I'm willing to be willing, the field is open wide. And I know I have the courage, so I push my fears aside and allow these words of truth be heard from every mountain high. I Welcome, welcome everyone to our sixth episode of The Amazing Hour, wow. where we celebrate everyday superstars. I'm Joanne O'Brien. And I'm Sabrina Johnson. And we are live at Sunset Gower Studios here in the heart of Hollywood uh, at the UBN radio, uh, radio station. Mm -hmm. So um, we have a very exciting show lined up tonight mm -hmm. um we can't wait to introduce our guest but um first we got a couple things we'd like to uh well we want to let you know i don't know if you've if you've missed any of our past shows because yes. now we have five you can go to our youtube channel and check us out at youtube.com forward slash the amazing hour you can go to the amazing hour radio show.com and within the next week i promise it will be fully updated and you can buy stuff off of there. Um, we don't know what you're going to be able to buy, but it'll be something. Well, it'll definitely be the amazing song. Yes, which you that'll can play be on there. every day yes. and be inspired and yes. sing and sing. I'm amazing. Yay! Yes, because you are. Yes, right. Yes. So, um, so yeah. And you can also go to iTunes because there's a podcast there of the show, and you could listen on iTunes as well. So we're everywhere now. We're kind of yay. Getting we're getting we're getting more and more proficient as we go along. We are we? indeed we're learning lots learning. of great stuff. So talking about that, our our thing that we're going to ask each other just so you can get to know us is what was our amazing highlight of the week? And Joanne, you kind of had like a, a continuing birthday week, didn't you? I did. I've I've really I've been celebrating my birthday. I'm sad <laughs> that it's now. July first because <laughs> Your birthday was July a, June tenth. June tenth, and we've been <laughs> celebrating. And I had a delightful dinner. My friend Jean took me to dinner at Luke, which is a spectacular restaurant with the most extraordinary food. And we celebrated dinner for four hours. Wow. wow. And um, and she gave me beautiful roses mm. and a beautiful candle. And Aww. I have been just celebrating all week long. Aww. And um, and it's been delightful. So luck is not Luke. No, it's not luck. It's not. It's Luke. L-U-Q-U-E-S. Right? Yes. Luke. And, and, yeah. Yeah. So then when I see the French name Luke, L-U-C, I call it luck. So I'm not very good with, oh, our, our guest is laughing. And well, yeah, anyways, he's worried oh, about this is, this is, we won't mess this up is, his name. We promise. <laughs> luck. I always say, when I say luck, I go, oh, that must be like luck, but it's Luke. And this is, what's the name of the restaurant again? Luke. Luke. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> it's your turn. You have to tell okay, us good. something that you did this week. Okay. That my, was... my, the, my amazing highlight was actually, I thought about it was last night. We had a meeting here at UBN radio with all of the different hosts of the radio shows. And it was really quite a blast. It's our first one. We're newbies. And it was really, uh, we were telling our guests about it. It was funny because we had the tango show people and then we had some psychologists and we had, um, the ladies that do don't wig out and we had this a new brand new uh host of uh, a gospel uh, he's a member of a gospel group take six take six yeah he his shows on sunday hanging out with uh uh Cl clyde is it clyde um, claude. claude okay yeah. close it claude claude yeah. okay 
Claude McKnight. Claude McKnight. And then we, and then had, we had John, yes. who's our, our engineer, who's here today John also. John and Chandra. And Chandra, are, they have their fabulous show. And it was just so, and it was just like, it was just funny because every one just has it's such a different eclectic group so like the tango group said we should really invite our audience to come and the psychologists were like no we don't invite our <laughs> we, no, were gonna- <laughs> we don't want our, our listeners to come meet us they don't want to be stalked <laughs> so, so and then afterwards and that was just like so great and then afterwards um, we have this wonderful business office here that Joanne and I, it's called Denny's. It's called Denny's. <laughs> we go to Denny's. And I, and I love Denny's because I tell Joanne, I love Denny's because I know so many people that have made huge deals at Denny's. So mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, we're really with the big wigs at Denny's. So we go to Denny's and we had our meeting afterwards because there was so much to digest. I, I almost wanted to ask one guy when he talked about Twitter and tweets and hoot and this, if he was talking English, but I didn't. Because I have enough sweet time. Is she's talking. Yeah, about. I'm having I have enough trouble <laughs> with Luke and all this other stuff. So anyways, we went to Danny's and the highlight was there a gentleman walked in. We're in the middle of Hollywood. Hollywood and all its stars on the street and off the street. And someone walked in and he he just didn't seem to be quite so centered. And um <laughs> he he um he came in and uh he wanted to be served and he decided that um this was just an assault against him that he wasn't served right away. And it goes back all the way to times way before he was born. And this is now 2014. We have to get with civil he rights. Was being and persecuted that. He was being for, persecuted for, for just being overlooked. And he yes. said he'd been there for a very long time. <laughs> and I was in. like, he just <laughs> sat down. The seat wasn't warm yet. <laughs> he just walked in. And, and it was like you could tell some people were uncomfortable. But there were two things. One is that the staff there was wonderful because they just were so courteous with him. And uh, very courteous. Like, yes, you know, well, and he was really uh, kind of, I guess, aggressive well i guess i was going to say throwing a hissy fit but that's not very nice he but anyway so he so what happened was that joanne this is the highlight as joanne sees this and while other people are getting nervous she goes wow look at that he made this whole story up he could be a writer and i thought that was wonderful well he it's true because it was cr- complete fiction <laughs> everything he said was fiction none of it was true none of that happened because we were watching everything unfold and nothing had unfolded except in his brain and in his mind he sat down and the waitress just had hadn't moved one booth <laughs> over yet, but he took that as an entire slight. Yeah. So it was it and, was really you, great to watch that unfold. But in your mind, something unfolded because you gave him a new job assignment as a I writer, did. which him was writer. wonderful. You're right in the right you're, part you're of it. You're giving him so. like a creative endeavor now, which was what <laughs> that was what I thought was so great. And then the very end of it was so he was ready to go, and instead of like you know like oh finally you know the the manager whoever said. So now you're you're um, you're ready. You're all done now. And it's just like, oh, you're all done now. Just kind of like you know, like you would say to a child, you're all done with your tantrum. And but very wait, professional. But wait, the best part was, I think the booth was cursed because <laughs> the next guy came in and sat down in the very same booth, and within about ten seconds, stands up, storms out, and slams the door. And I was like, this is good. We should stay for dessert. <laughs> we have no idea who's coming next. Well, Chandra's in the room, and she's asking if it was Tansy was your waiter. Who was your who was your server? Uh, Lula. Oh wait, maybe it no, was Tansy. It, w- it was it wasn't Tansy. No, it wasn't Tansy. Okay. No, 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 we no, know we, her. We like Tansy. We like her. She's we, on Tansy's Tuesday nights. Great. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, Tansy, yeah. we know. Yeah. yeah, Tansy knows us too. She comes in and knows. Yeah. I never get. So we're, we're, know Tansy. Yeah. we say go go to Denny's because yes. they know how to treat crazy people. <laughs> and free and free entertainment, and you can assign people jobs all you want. It's wonderful. And they only endeavors. have pumpkin pie at the holiday <laughs> time because I ask every, every time. single time. In <laughs> July, do you have pumpkin oh, pie? So my God. So anyway, so now. So da, 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 da. we have talking about amazing highlight. Now we have an amazing highlight here. Yay. I'm really looking forward to this. We're so now. Do you want me to introduce or do you want to introduce? I will introduce because I have practiced saying his name. Oh, I'm so times. glad. So we have a wonderful, wonderful crime fiction writer, uh, Quay Quarte. At, right? I said Quarte. it. Quarte. Quarte. Like Quarte. Quarte with a Y on it. Okay. K-W-E-I. We're going to take Q-U-A-R-T. the microphone away from you. <laughs> K- I know how to spell K W E I Q U A R T E Y. Oh, that's very good. Quay Quarte. Yes, he, yeah. uh, and he is a wonderful um, crime fiction writer, and he has a series of books of Detec- Detective Darko. And he is um, in Ghana, and, uh, and the 
capital of Ghana and all around. And the first book I read of Quay's was for our book club, and it was Wife of the Gods. And it was about fetish priests that have multiple wives, and there was a murder of one of the wives. And Quay really brings us into Ghana in a way that, um, you know, I was telling uh, Quay that Carl Hyacin brings us into uh, the, you know, uh, Florida's um, uh, uh wetlands Mm -hmm. he really brings us into this this land and so we really get to learn about uh the people of ghana and but detective darko i just love him because he's so human and i really feel like i could like know him and now he's on his fourth murder no well he's on his fourth murder that would be coming out but this is the third murder uh third murder right and uh so uh and quay is also a medical doctor this is the thing i really liked (laughs) about him is he does he gets up really early and writes these wonderful books and then he goes and does his doctoring and he then his doctoring his doctoring (laughs) his doctoring (laughs) his doctoring and he does and then he comes back home and you know he gets up and he doctors his stories so it's like it's wonderful so quay quay we're so excited you're here i know right you didn't know there were all these people out here they're imaginary (laughs) that clapping really (laughs) startled me <laughs> <laughs> it startles us every time but we love it well, thank we love you. it thank you very much for the uh the applause <laughs> audience out there <laughs> we're so excited that you are here well i'm excited to be here too and we can't wait to hear all about you and about your writing and about your doctoring um <laughs> you studied at howard university yes. and that is that where you did your undergraduate and that that was medical school. That was medical school. Right, okay. Right. And my undergraduate uh, much of it was done um in Ghana actually. Okay. Yeah, just before I left. Just yeah. before you left. And mm-hmm. you came here I came here when I was 18. So um, you did your undergraduate work before the age of 18? Uh yeah, well, it's a little complicated, but it's the British system of uh well, it was the British system. Now Ghana has ab- adopted the American system, but at the time it was the British system which puts me um, actually um, ends me at the end of uh, high school earlier than I would have in the in the U.S. But what takes longer is med school itself because it includes two preclinical and uh, pre-medical years. So that's how we end up being right. the same. Right? So you're exactly. a super, super smarty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> what did you get on your SATs? <laughs> no, I, no <laughs> I'm not telling you. Okay. <laughs> Well, good, because I'm not telling you about mine either. (laughs) So, Quay, you know, one thing that I was saying about your books that I love is that you really introduce us to this whole new world called Ghana. Right. For most of us. Right. I mean, for some people it may not be new, but for me it certainly is new. Right. So, can you, and one thing that we're talking about is that we, I said, what makes Ghana so interesting to write about? And one thing you were talking about is how it's really changed so much since, um, you know, the British gave yes. up, you know, right. their, uh, so w- what, uh, can you explain what has happened since uh, it has become uh, independent of the British? What sure, has happened sure, since sure. then? And be- but before I do that, I just want to tell you about the little Ellen debacle. I don't know if you heard about no. it. No. But when when the, the U.S. scored against Ghana within 39 seconds, Ellen tweeted that um, it took her, it it was it took a, a shorter time for them to score than it took her to look up Ghana on the, <laughs> the world map. So of course this sent up quite a bit of a, a firestorm because and so you know people are tweeting her back and forth. So that was uh, Ellen's little faux pas, but. <laughs> I just thought I'd But tell it got Ghana that. on the map because of Ellen. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres right, put Ghana exactly. on the map. So okay. We'll, so we'll su- we'll su- we'll uh, we'll tweet Ellen and tell her that she can call in and get a copy of your book. Yeah. For free. You know what? That's a That's very, a great idea. Very, Next yes. I wish I had yes. known That's I would have tweeted right. Ellen. Since she doesn't yes. know where it is. The, right, you can send a one yes. of her, my book. There you yes. go. All You're right. brilliant. I know. Brilliant. I, I can't I can't talk, but I'm brilliant. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, John's laughing. I guess that's the end of the show. John uh, is just like laughing. Our our engineer John is just like beat red. Yeah, (laughs) true. But um, so when so uh, tell us about how God and you know it is. I just have to say one thing about the World Cup. I'm I'm not that into it, but I love that countries can get together over a ball. Absolutely. Okay. So absolutely. There we go. Okay. So Ghana basically, I would say is you can picture it as being the center of the world because. 
You've got the Greenwich Meridian, which is Greenwich Mean Time that runs straight through London. Or, well, actually. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> Ooh, that was wow. <laughs> Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> I'm okay. I don't know if the microphone is. Yeah, so you've got the Greenwich uh, Meridian running straight through Greenwich, uh, close to London. It goes right straight through Accra, which is the capital of, of Ghana. And then you've got the equator just below that. So it's almost the two medium lines in the on the world that separate the north and south, southern hemisphere, and the west and eastern wow. hemisphere. So it's right in the center there. And in fact, the, the name of my latest book, Murder at Cape Three Points, Cape Three Points is the most southernmost tip of Ghana, closest to that intersection. In fact, that's why they call it the land nearest nowhere, because it's, the, it's zero latitude, zero longitude, and zero sea level. So there you go. So it's right bang in the middle of the world, let's say, and it's it's about the size about the uh, Argonne, uh, oh state really? of Argonne. Well, about it's larger yeah. than I thought it was. Yeah. Okay. And um, as you said, the, we uh, got independence from um, the British in 1957. Um, the country is bordered by uh, three francophone countries, actually. Um, listen well, everybody. Listen well. Cote d'Ivoire on the uh, west side. Burkina Faso on the north, and then on the east side we have uh, Togo. So hmm, those three. Could you repeat that? Because <laughs> maybe there's going to be a question later on, and maybe so Ellen might want to know this. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Somebody tweet Ellen. Ellen so, needs so to know where Cote d'Ivoire is. Say those three things so again. So Cote d'Ivoire is on the the western um, border, uh, Burkina Faso, which is on the north, and then Togo on the east. Side. Togo on the east. Okay. Right, and then of course. The coast is the southern border. So it's a coastal country, and the capital, Accra, is uh, on, on the coast as well. So um, after independence, uh, the great leader, Kwame Nkrumah, um, brought the country to uh, independence. And things sort of were very br as a bright future for Ghana for a while, and then <laughs> things just started to go mm -hmm. haywire. So for, I'd say for decades, Ghana was sort of floundering around until the 80s when we, I mean, we had so, they had, there was so many coups, uh, military coups. Well, was it because, were they wearing shoulder pads there too? Because, you know, the 80s was a really bad time for us in the United States. So I think it was the fashion era. And bad hair, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, but late 80s, Ghana started to recover. And through the 90s, um, they, they, we pick, they picked up definitely um, got a great uh, gro gross domestic product of about uh, eight, seven, eight uh, percent rate growth, and that's that's quite astounding. I mean, we, what, what's we, ours we, like three? Yeah, three yeah. if we you know right. uh, on a good day. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, so so yeah, that's that's the short the short down and dirty uh, history. Well, Ghana. murder at Cape Three Points. I just started it. Um, I have to hold it up because I want everyone to see what we're talking about. Can can you see that? Am I, I holding it? On the screen. Oh, you okay. do? Okay, no. it's oh, on the screen. Okay. All right, great, great, great. Yeah. So I, I just started Murder yes. at Cape Three Points, and um, and I know we've got lots to talk about, but I just have to say, you know, I, I'm a fan of crime novels, mm. and I haven't really been reading much fiction for quite some time, but I was a huge fan of, of, of Patricia Cornwell. She drew me right in, and right. she was someone I really liked, yeah. and I haven't read her in many years, so when I picked this up, it was literally because uh, Sabrina said, you know, you got to read this. He's going to be a guest on our show. And I said, oh, OK, you know, um, let me let me start reading so I can learn more about Quay. And I was immediately drawn in and I can't wait to finish this one. Thank you. And I'm, I'm sad that I'm starting here. I kind of wish I'd started on the first one because to get to it's know okay, Darko. Though. Yeah. To yeah. get to because I love it when you get to right, know a right, character right. Uh, through their their growth because it's part of your growth yeah, and your evolution. Absolutely. And but you uh, know, it's also kind of it's also kind of fun to be able to say, "Oh, that's what that was about." Oh, you right, know? right, right. Yeah, to sort of look at it like backwards or back to the future or whatever. Yeah, I can't um, say enough about this because I love that I'll be going through the day and going, "Oh, I, I can't wait to get home and see what <laughs> what else is happening." Oh, that's good. That's so, good. Um, so I'm I'm recommending Murder at Cape Three Points for summer reading, beach reading. Right. Um, right. Thanks. You know, and you learn something. So you you do. You really do. You really just. Yeah. And, you know, you kind of remind me a little bit of. Um, the guy who wrote uh, the the finishing school books, 
Uh huh. Um, yeah. You know Alexander McCall. Oh, McCall Smith. Yeah, oh, McCall okay. Smith, yeah, the yes. number one ladies yes. detective. A little yeah. bit because, yeah. but not necessarily. I could. I wasn't. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't quite so engaged with them. <laughs> and I think. And I love. But what I'll love, tell Alex you said. Oh yes, thank you. <laughs> we'll tweet that too. <laughs> with, with Ellen. With Ellen. <laughs> with Ellen. But um, I wasn't quite so engaged. And but what I love about it is that there is something about both of your writing that has a formality to it. It's like that. I love it. Where it's a formality of when and and now this is the and it's like a wonderful kind of um but it's not stiffness Mm -hmm. it's just very Mm -hmm. much kind of like a there's a a formal it's not it's it's a very um crisp writing i see okay do you know what i'm talking about which i really enjoy because it's it's very proper it's like the (laughs) the ladies detect you know they're ladies (laughs) but this is you know detective darko who you know, may not be so proper, but at the same time, he really is very orderly. Yeah. And he tries to, you know, follow to the rule, and when right. he doesn't, he... Right. And, and what I like about him is that he is so human, and you don't make him like... Some of the American authors feel like if he can't be a quadriplegic who is, you know, an alcoholic or something, they feel, or, you know, like Joe Nesbo, you know, his character. Right, right. If they're not totally on the edge, yeah. they, they don't feel like they can get the reader. Mm-hmm. Whereas Detective Darko, he's not on the edge. He might have... I did. He does have a little bit of a of a. He likes the pot a little bit, right? <laughs> just a little, just a little bit. And he, his family has a little bit of a health challenge, but it's not like drastic. And you make it very relatable. Yeah. And I, yeah. that's what I really love about that. Um, yeah. How did you get to? Uh, well, I, you know, he um, he was really a work in progress. When I first started the series, um, he was actually much more goody goody two shoes. Oh. And what happened was Chikata, who is his um, assistant, detective sergeant, was actually the bad boy. Okay. Uh, And he was the one that used to lose his temper and and beat up a few people and things like that. And then as I wrote the the novel, I realized, you know what? Chikata is way more uh, uh, interesting than Darko is which is a disaster. Your sidekick should never be more interesting. <laughs> it, that's the number one rule right. if you've got sidekicks. So actually, I transferred some of Chikata's um, characteristics onto Darko mm. without losing um, Darko's personality mm. because Darko is, is authoritative in, in many ways. Yes. Although the thing about Darko is that He'll follow the rules as as long as he as far as he thinks it's sensible to right. follow the rules. Right. If it doesn't make sense to him, he's he's gonna you know buck the system, and he's also gonna challenge authority. Yes. As well, he's never gonna follow the rules so much that he does not challenge authority. So I want to know your first. This is your third, right. and you're working on your fourth. Right. When? How many years ago did you start your first book? And Am I correct in that you were in medical school when you started, or were you out of medical school? I was out of medical school uh, when I actually went back to my original love of writing, which started when I was eight or nine. Okay. And, in fact, I used to write um, little short stories oh. uh, at home, and um, i you know clip cardboard covers to them and do my illustrations. That's what we call self-publishing now. <laughs> right. <laughs> love that. <laughs> you were the original self-publisher. You were the original self-publisher. Absolutely. And so um, then I got interested in, in medicine. And, um, you know, the thing about medicine is it's it's very cerebral, very uh, intellectual, and less creative. Right. And so as I went through medical school, I was doing all this sort of concrete thinking. And when I came out of medical school, <laughs> I guess the, the writing bug bit me one day. And I was uh, once in the ICU um, sitting doodling on my <laughs> medical records, which you're not supposed to do. <laughs> and uh, a nurse who knew me really well said, no, what's wrong with you today? You look really down in the dumps. And I said, well, yeah, this whole doctor thing is so sort of, um, what's the word, anticlimactic. <laughs> and she said, well, what is it that you really want to do? And I said, I've always wanted to write. And she said to me, she said, well, what's stopping you? Mm. And then I realized, you, you know what, she's absolutely right. There is nothing stopping me now because, you know, my studies are over. I still have to study, but it's not like I, you know, I'm up against examination deadlines and things like that. The studying I'm doing is sort of, you know, exemplary for what I'm doing is, uh, in my practice. Sure. Right. That was a, that's my favorite. That's the reason when, I, when Joanna and I were looking at guests, I said, we have to have Quay because when I heard that story mm. of this 
angel who came and said, what's right. stopping you? Right. I right. love that because uh, so often people will say things like, oh, I want to be a fashion designer, but I work as a secretary. And I always say to them, do both. And yeah. it, it's like you have your passion job and you have your pay job. And Absolutely. it just so happened your passion job is now paying. Right. And <laughs> it, it was when your first publisher was Random House, yeah. which was really quite yeah. remarkable. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. And, you know, there is a tradition of doctors who are writers as well. Yes. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, creator yes. of the great sure. Sherlock Holmes. Michael Crichton, Robin Cook, um, Khaled Hosseini, who wrote The Kite Runner. Oh, oh right. I didn't yeah. know he was a doctor. Yeah, he's a contemporary of mine, actually. Really? Wow. He worked in my medical group. And then, uh, I don't know, I guess he sold like maybe a couple million <laughs> books so he or decided something. decided not to do that, yeah. He went and on then, vacation. Uh, that's right. He just went on this extended <laughs> vacation. We never saw him back. I, I don't know what happened there, you know. <laughs> so so you're looking for that extended vacation. <laughs> Eventually, you ultimately, know, you know yeah. That. So Good. Will you invite us to your private island yeah. when you have it? <laughs> it, Absolutely. But, you know, but when you do this, when you and – you, and talk about this because – you really uh, work very hard. What is your schedule like? Because you do work as a doctor mm -hmm. and critical care. Yeah, wound, yeah, wound, yeah, yeah. I do wound care. Wound care. Uh, my, my schedule is hell. No, <laughs> no, that's an exaggeration. I, I really can't complain. I've been with the medical group I've been with uh, for so long now, and they sort of know me, and they know what's going on. It's not a secret. They know all about my books and so on. So they are giving me the space that I'm asking for. Nice. And I am cutting down my hours a little bit. But in general, I've always been an mo early morning worker. I work, wake up at 5, and then I start my writing. Actually, what I do is I... Um, I, I get ready for work and I go to work and then I start writing there because oh, <laughs> what yeah. what happened to me once I, I really got into the writing and I looked up at the clock and it was like 10 minutes to 8 and 8 o'clock is when I start oh. to work oh. because I got so deep sure. into it yeah. right so it's much safer if I actually get to work and then and start, start writing <laughs> right. wow. so I do that and so I get in maybe about one one to one and a half hour in before and then then I do have days off when I work, you know, a, a many more hours than that, maybe four to six, depending on. So about how long so. does it take to get one book uh, start to finish? Um, now I'm, a, I'm around about uh, three months for the first draft. For the first draft. Right, for the first draft. And then the next, uh, then probably the next three is back and forth editing with the editor. Uh, and then it goes into production after that. Uh, so my next book is scheduled to be out uh, March 2015. Uh, oh, okay, uh, good. Yeah. So that's not so far away. Right, right, it's right, right. really right around it's the right corner. It's right around the corner. So I want to also hear, we were chatting mm -hmm. um, beforehand about the idea of writing and it being like a marathon. Right. Yes. And, you know, 26 months. You know, everyone who's anyone who's ever run a marathon knows that you know the the, the beginning lot. of what it's like in your little mile markers. So share with us about your page mile right, markers right. for the yeah, book marathon. Yeah, my page mile markers. Okay, number the the first page is the most terrifying oh. because you have that stretch that twenty six miles ahead of you. The like say I'm like in the range of three fifty to four hundred. That's my usual range of um, pages. So, and, and the thought usually is like, how am I going to write all these pages? Right. Yeah. And then you write, you know, the first page. Okay, so that's the first page. <laughs> 349 to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you get to 20, you get this sort of feeling like, hey, you know what? This actually sort of might work. And then, then you hit 50, and then you start to feel a little bit like in your stride. Uh, and then 100 is like, as, as I said to you, um, <laughs> Joanne, hundreds is like the o open the champagne bottle right, because right, right. you really think that you've really gotten into you, it now. You can right. really see uh -huh. that there's a finish. You can see it, yeah. And then, so, so interestingly enough, 200 um, is sort of like, oh, okay, you know, I hit 200, let's keep going. It's not a celebration at all. This is just like, okay, keep moving. Huh. Don't stop for anything. Just keep going. And 300, you're just really focusing in on, you know, the end is in sight, you know it. You're, you're planning to bring all your elements together, and then you that's when you get the most focus, right. I, I would say. And when yeah. you're writing and, and you're looking at a page, do you, do, you, do you sometimes go up to the word counter and go, okay, how many words are on this page? Does it equal a page? Do you, like, how do you know what's a page? Um, no, with with word basically, um, you go you go by the by the pages. I don't go much by the words, and the reason for that is, for example, a a, a page with a lot of dialogue will have uh, fewer words on it. 
but you still get to the end of that right. page, which is really nice. Uh-huh. <laughs> as much dialogue that's, as that, possible. That's, that's not the hill. <laughs> right. That's exactly. not the hill. So, exactly. So, exactly. So, so talking about uh, the, the marathon and the books, when you start that blank page, we were talking about this earlier that I said you really do have this wonderful, um, it seems like, uh, mm, I, I don't want to use the word agenda, but it seems like you really have this wonderful uh, idea mm. of, of really – making Ghana yeah. uh, uh, you're really um, you're an advocate for Ghana yeah that's the way to put it and yeah. so your first book was it Wife of the Gods Wife of the Gods yeah right. and that was about the fetish priest right. with the multiple right. Right. wives mm-hmm. and um, your second book which I haven't read what was that Children of the Street, of the yeah. Street. Okay. that was set more in a, a urban setting with um, there's a serial killer on the loose but what it dealt was with this um, real um, serious problem of homeless uh, kids in Accra, the capital of Ghana. Uh, you know, people coming from the rural areas looking for work, and um, there's not as much work as maybe they thought, and and most of them are homeless. So you have hundreds and hundreds. There's supposed to be about sixty thousand homeless children uh, in Accra, of a, a city wow. of about two million, and uh, you see them sleeping on the streets. Uh, and every why night are they night. why are they homeless? What, what well, it's it's there's a diff- there are different categories. There's one category of kids who might have been thrown out of the home. They have a home in Accra, but either a stepfather or a stepmother or something threw them out. Okay. Uh, there's a second category of um, kids who supposedly were brought down from um, a less uh, fortunate relative, sent down to Accra to a in quotes, a more well-off relative. It turns out the the, the relative is, you know, just a uh, just a really horrible person who sends a kid out and says, "You go work, and you know, bring me the the proceeds." So that's another. And then then there's another uh, category of those kids who are born who are children of kids because oh. they are born in wow. the street. In the street, wow. right? Exactly. So, so wow. that is a so that was what the the murder was set against a, a, a serial killer basically targeting these um, uh, mostly teenage uh, kids. In now, the was this based on any kind of a story that you read or knew about or know that this happened? So you were that's where you got the idea to infuse it into into y- the book. Actually, what happened was when I was researching for Wife of the Gods, as I was going around the city, I noticed these uh, kids. Um, they push what are called trucks. It's a it's a strange term. They're actually four wheel carts, and they put a whole bunch of things like um, old car parts and stuff. It's really a recycling program, and they travel all along the street picking up all this stuff, and they take them to junkyards for uh, resale and reprocessing and so on. And they call truck pushers. And I was just fascinated by these truck pushers. There's one in front who pulls it and one behind. And they go for miles and miles and miles every single day. Um, And I said, who are these people? So I found out a little bit more about them. Some of them are homeless. And that's when I decided that I was interested in the whole Hmm. issue of of homeless kids and setting a a murder against that background. Wow. And And then then the third one, uh, Murder Cape Three Points. You know, we've moved forward quite a a few years now. This is... uh, 2007 to the uh, present time when oil was disco- discovered off the coast of Ghana. And it's really trans- transforming the country in, in many different ways. And um, I chose to set th- make that a background because, um, you know, it's, it's really a, um, an area of instant greed, uh, you know, for money, uh, to make money. There's a lot of corruption tied sure. up in it. It's just like fertile, fertile land for murder. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and so I, I basically, I pick my, the topics that I'm interested in and then I, I put the murder against it. And um, all sorts of things come up as well, I'm writing. I'm so excited, I can't wait to find out. Don't tell me, because I know you're further along <laughs> in the book than I am. I don't, wanna, I don't want you to spoil any of it because I'm so excited to know what's, I'm trying to figure it out too. I'm like. I bet you won't. I won't, yay, good, <laughs> even well, better. Then, but you know, one thing I will have to say about Wife of the Gods, which I think you, probably do in, in general is you really use an emotional component and how yes. he figures out things yes. which I love because he, yeah. he, it's really like you know in that book it was a lot about jealousy yes. I have a really great question that mm. just came to me right. if you were going to cast yes Darko yes who would you cast as your leading man if uh, you were to cast the TV series right on HBO or Showtime who yeah. would you cast 
Okay, well, Ellen wouldn't be in it. <laughs> Up, oh, Ellen, I'll, I'll, next. I'll, I'll, Your 16 bars I, are over. I know who I would cast. You, who would you cast? I, I know. Uh, Idris Elba is number one. That's, oh. the, that's the first choice. Yeah, Idris Elba. Mm. And, you know, I've been tweeting, but I guess his people don't read my tweets, Ooh. you know. Um, and then uh, there's another uh, young actor whose name is um, Oyelowo. Uh, is it Edward? I'm not sure. But he was in Red Tails. And um, he's actually a British actor, but he um, he can do accents really well. He's really, really talented. And uh, there are one or two others, but uh, Idris is way up there. Uh, okay, Idris? so I have to look him up and oh, see. Oh, you know who I, oh. I... I'll know right away, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. Oh, yeah, you know. you'll know him. Oh, yeah, well, you'll know him. One of the things I love meeting you is to hear, as I said before, hearing your accent, because I like to read in the dialect that it's been written in. Mm. So now right. I get to um, attach a bit more dialect, and I can hear dialect through this. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so uh, I, I appreciate that. So now I get to really, I'm gonna put your voice in there. Right, and the thing about um, Darko, which is, which is actually very much like a lot of people in Ghana, is that um, he, he does speak five, five languages, including English. Really? Wow. Yes, and those are the, the, the main uh, languages in Ghana. It's, it's, it's generally, uh, called by <laughs> Westerners often call them dialects, you know, but that's well, like saying Jap Jap Japanese is a dialect of Chinese. So oh. There is no similarity between okay. the different languages spoken in Ghana, what the seven the, main languages. What are the five languages? Uh, Ga, Ewe, Tri, uh, Fanti, and English. Those are the five. And you speak, um, what do you well, speak? Well, I'm learning Tri. Uh, my dad uh, is actually a Ga, which is a very small tribe, a very proud uh, tribe. Um, who would kill me if they found out I was learning tree? But tree is the most. Well, you just said it on the air, so don't tell them to go to the I YouTube. Dark right. Darko's now moving over to America. <laughs> we know where your next novel's coming from. Yeah. So. Um. No, so so when you uh, maybe that accent is adds to the formality because I do hear that that British. Maybe that as as but, but going back to your uh, how you really are this advocate for Ghana. So when you have a book, you already have what social issue you have in mm -hmm. mind before you write. Yeah, yeah. So your next book is about gold, right. the mining of gold. Ooh, gold this is yeah. going to be great. Yeah, it's called Gold of the Fathers, yes. and uh, it takes a name from um, the person who there was a an aggrieved person in the the story he who said about the Chinese who um, have come to Ghana and in thousands um, and embarked on uh, illegal alluvial surf surface mining, which involves digging up the land and, and you know looking for gold in the gravel that's deep in the ground. And yeah. this destroys a lot of the landscape. And um, so one of the characters says that, you know, these people have come to this country and have stolen the gold that belongs to our fathers. Um, and so that's that's been my issue. And anybody who goes to my website will see some of the photographs that I took of these horrible moonscapes of just land, you know, dug up by excavators, just turned into. Uh, it's just something like out of a movie almost. It's almost mm -hmm. nightmarish to see it. This is destroying green, fertile lands, just looking for alluvial gold. So these are things that, I, I mean, I never knew that oil was off the coast of Ghana. Yeah. I never knew about the fetish priest. I never knew about this gold. Right. So you're really educating us to know in. How do, how do your books, uh, how are they taken in uh, Ghana? How are they accepted? Well, you know, it's, it's actually been quite frustrating for um, all of us on, on each side of the Atlantic because Ghanaians desperately want to read it, but because they don't have, they, they, they have no um, distribution system arrangements with American publishers. So my books are not shipped there. I mean, uh, individual bookstores can order them, but there's nothing like having a warehouse from sure. where these can be sent out to the different so bookstores. So what about Kindle? What about downloading that way? Can, do they have access to uh, that? Some, yes, some people do have uh, access to Kindle in Ghana, but it's, it's still the book, which, you know, sure. the paper book. Which you want to hold more, the book, yeah. yeah. But I'm, I'm shipping, I'm doing this on my own, my own shipping this, this summer. I'm just going to ship two boxes there and... Uh, maybe do a limited distribution there, and hopefully there'll be some more orders. For well, 
I don't want to interrupt this, but I don't want to get too far yes. away yes, because yes. we're already 15 minutes past wow. our normal oh. fun giveaway oh, time. Oh, 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 oh. So we do. I have. We do have to do a little interruption for yes. some fun, fun, yes. fun. Do we have okay. any callers? So well, we, not yet because oh. they don't have a question. Oh, well, they, 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 <laughs> may, they may not even have a number. <laughs> I know. Can, can you can you hold up the number for me again? Because you know me. Okay. So all right. So everyone, we're going to do our little giveaway. We've got two giveaways, and yes. so get your pen out and write the number down 323-843-2826 that's 323-843-2826 okay. okay so write that number down and um what are so our giveaways? so what are our giveaways quay what are what are you okay the offering? first the first giveaway is um a Good copy holder. of of this, the novel of murder at kate that we've been talking about points, right and then the second is um actually i should have brought it in but it's a t-shirt with that design on it, How and um, um, actually, you know, in the in the green room, if you could, if you don't mind, just <laughs> Kurt, go and get Kurt, a thank you, shirt Kurt, for me. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks, Kurt. <laughs> Did you design the jacket? The t-shirt. No. The t-shirt. Um, okay, well, the t-shirt the, has the, the, the same jacket. design, oh, the but jacket. the book yeah, jacket. Yeah, no, the book jacket was uh, Soho <laughs> Press, which is my new. Um, we because we want to hear about that too, about yeah, what that yeah. was like. To but they did a wonderful job, and I'm really really pleased about it. Yeah, it's a cool cover. Yeah. So. All right. So the first question. First of all, do we have anyone in the chat room tonight? We do. We do. Okay. Good. So our first question. Quay. Oh, look at this T-shirt. Ooh, look at this, this T-shirt. A T-shirt. It's really cool. Oh, that's a cool T-shirt. Can you? Sh can yeah, you? You want to hold here? Yeah. Here we go. Oh, that is cool. And what is? Right? It, and what yeah. does it say at the bottom? Oh, Michael Connolly quote. Yeah. Well, How we, cool is that? Did and we, then, did we tweet and then the back says, I like see. this, the land nearest There's nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> Let's see the Michael Connolly quote. Did, okay, can did you, you read that? Joanne, when you tweeted everybody, did you tweet Michael Connolly? I did Connolly? not tweet Michael Connolly. Okay. Quay. Okay, oh, I'll read it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, read it. Um, Quay Quarte does what all the best storytellers do. He takes you to a world you have never seen and makes it as real to you as your own backyard. Wow. He must be a writer. That's wonderful. <laughs> Very yeah. nice. So okay. Nice. So the first thing we're giving away is the book. The book. Okay. So and what is the question? Okay. So the first question is, what is the year that Ghana gained independence from Great Britain? Okay. Okay. So while all of you are googling that, because we know <laughs> that you don't know the answer, which is fine, because I don't Quay either. Even though Quay gave the answer earlier, if you're you listening. did give the answer earlier. So while we're waiting for someone to Google that, call in and get their great summer reading book, we have, we have a fun question to ask you. We have our theme question. Our theme question. Which is that if every time you walked into a room, a theme song played, what would that be? Okay. I, I thought about this, and then I said, you know what? I'm going to give them a really strange answer. They're going to find uh -oh, this very we've, we've had strange answers We've before. had strange answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There is, um, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, it's possible you never did, but there was a, a great French, speaking of French, uh, right yes, up your street. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know I won't be able to say it, that's okay. <laughs> a great um, um, French singer by name of Edith Piaf. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Right, and she had uh, one of her favorite famous songs was... Um, Je ne regrette rien, uh -huh. which means I regret, regret nothing. nothing. Oh, I, I love that <laughs> in <laughs> English, and mm -hmm. I love your hearing I it. Regret hearing it, you say it in French. It's beautiful. Right. So uh -huh. basically, what she says is, "All the good, all the bad, it's all the same to uh -huh. me. I regret none of it." Uh -huh. Now she had a much more tumultuous yes, life yeah. than I did, I must <laughs> but say. She could, but she could sing that very, very <laughs> honestly. Right. Huh? Right. And um, I, actually, if you no like. No one. Oh my Actually, gosh. if you uh, if you like, excuse my terrible voice. Oh yeah, yeah, sing a little yes. bit. Yes. Oh yeah. I don't have a voice like yours. That's okay, <laughs> Joanne. But I will sing like just a oh, couple yeah. of verses. Yeah. <coughs> oh, okay. I love this. Here we go. I love this. Non, rien de rien. Non, je ne gratte rien. Tout le bien qu'on m'a fait. Tout le mal, tout ça m'est égal. Non, rien de rien. Non, je ne gratte rien. Balayer, oublier, payer. Je me fous du passé. 
Wow. I love it. I love beautiful. that song. I know that song. And I do that love it. <laughs> Look at you win your own book. I love it. Our audience <laughs> Okay, oh, great, great, great. Okay, you, who's you, our first you're caller? You're singing, called them. Yeah, we've got somebody, right? Okay. They will be calling again, but just keep going because they, they were calling while he was singing. Oh, okay. okay. Call back. Okay. Call okay. back. So, uh, ask, so uh, why don't you ask the second question, and then when the callers can really. Right. Okay, yeah. So so that's the first question, which is for the book, and the second question is for the T-shirt. So What's the second, second question? question? The second question, the second question is, name one of the Francophone countries that borders the country of Ghana. Okay, oh. good. And we just did go one. over this. Okay, so who's our first caller? for the book. I'm sorry, I have terrible laryngitis. Oh, who is I'm, this? Les, my name is Leslie. Oh, hi, Leslie. Is this Leslie? I, d- hi, I Leslie. know. Yes. Oh, oh, Leslie. Leslie, oh, Leslie Her- from the book club. And Leslie Hurricway. Oh, really? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Leslie, you get to read this great book. Well, we, you so have to answer the question it. first. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> all in. You got to answer the question. 1957. Yes. Oh, yay! Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Leslie, congratulations. congratulations. That's was Gargle with cayenne pepper. Gar- gargle with cayenne pepper. It, that's what our producer said. Cayenne pepper and water. Doesn't that sound oh. pleasant? It, it'll that work. sounds really awful. <laughs> it does sound awful. <laughs> <laughs> or just silence. Or just it, but silence. it does work because I'm a singer and I've yeah. used it. So oh, really? It does oh, work. Okay, yeah, well, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, then we'll that's a good reference. I'll try it. That's right. right. Well, take care, okay. Leslie. Leslie, you'll get Thank your book this week. Get better. I'm wonderful. I'm listening to Quay. Thank you for coming on. Oh, yeah. thank you. Oh, did you know what? Are you still there? I am. Did you? I know you have your horse, but did you have a question that you wanted to ask Quay while we have you? Um, <clears throat> and if not, that's okay. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah, well, anyway, you, you know what? Up. From a doctor's point of view, you need to rest your voice. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Dr. Quay. You're, <laughs> You're welcome. Bye, Leslie. Bye, Leslie. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay, so we have somebody else? No. No, okay. okay. I can, I know Laura's been trying to call in. Laura Tash Rose. Oh, been trying. She, she just texted me. Oh, she just texted so you. Okay. She texted, yes, I'm multitasking well, while her, on the radio tell show. Her to, <laughs> tell her to text the answer. <laughs> oh, okay. you know yeah, you know, you could do that too. Yeah, go in the chat room, room if we yeah. can't get. Yeah. All right, Laura, you know, here's your chance. <laughs> To get the answer. Okay. Um, so while we are waiting for the answer, we sh- uh, why don't we talk about your publishing? Yeah. Yeah, what that was like to, first of all, the excitement of getting your first publisher and then what it was like to transfer and to leave them. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that I think that may- basically two of the most exciting uh, days for an author is the day that your agent calls and says that she did sell. That is an amazing day. It's just, there's nothing like it. <laughs> and then the second is the the day your first book comes out. There's never uh-huh. anything like your first book coming out. It's just it's a it's an incredible uh, experience. Um, and you know, it, Random House was really good, especially um, with the first book. But I don't know if you remember that it came out like 2009, which was just as our yes, <laughs> financial yes. troubles started. Yes. So um, a few people let go uh, from Random House. Somebody that um, I respected a lot as my uh, editor, um, Judy Sternlight, who now does freelancing and is doing very well. But she left, and it was never really quite the same. And I think we, we, um, I think we stumbled on the second book, I would say, and, and Random House chose not to continue with me. But uh, it, you know, every cloud has a sil- silver lining, and um, je ne regrette rien. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> so we went to uh, I went to Soho Press, which is a, a small press. Juliet Grames is my um, is my uh, editor, and and they're just wonderful. They're really really wonderful. I'm so excited to be well, with them. Well, we're delighted to have you. I mean, we're going to have to wrap up. We only have like two more minutes left, and we've got a couple of things to to address. But we want to make sure everyone knows where they can find you. And I could tell them, but we would rather you tell. Where can people go to buy your books, to learn about you, to hear you speak? Well, you um, first, first, if you go to Soho Press's um, website, which is SohoPress.com. They have uh, my books there on the queue for Corte. Uh, then you can go to my website, which is uh, quaycorte.com, just my name, uh, put together.com. Uh, and then all the outlets, um, Barnes and Nobles, Am- Amazon, um, all, all the, have my. Audible. All have, yes, and Audible. 
yeah. all have my my novels. And if right. they go to your website, they can sign up for your newsletter to yes, see where you'll do. be signing right, books. Right. Yeah, I wonderful. think it would be Thank really you. fun if we all read this book and kept coming back over oh. the next couple of weeks. Like, what did you think of what's going on? We should do that. That would be really fun. You yeah. know, we're yeah. going to do that. Okay. Yeah. okay. So anyone great. who wants to read the book with us, we're going to have a little on-the-air book club, and we'll just check in <laughs> yes. on Quay's book. I that think that'll great. be a really good time. So um, now it means I have to read. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, we're very, very delighted yes. that you are here, and I want to make sure everybody knows that next week we've got a really fun guest, too. Ooh. So next week we have Sherry Hersey. And you might know Sherry Hersey because she um, played the character of Eileen Markham on the TV show Home Improvement. And so she's going to be here talking a little bit about that, about Lily's Light, which is a project that her heart is really big on, but also Smile TV, which I think everyone should know about. So go to smiletvgroup.com and learn a little bit about Sherry before she comes and visits us next week. Um, and this is where we talk about what we're grateful uh, for. So, so Quay, one thing you're grateful for. Well, I'm just, I'm grateful that I've, you know, lived in so many different continents. It's, it's given me a real um, broad look at, you know, the way the world is. And, um, you know, as I said, I, I don't have any real regrets. I made my little mistakes along the way. But the general picture, I'm, I'm grateful for. Okay. Thank you. Um, we do have one caller really quick, someone who wants that T-shirt really bad. <laughs> so if we, have, if we have got 10 Laura. seconds, let's it's take it. One. Is it Laura? Hi. Hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. <laughs> you won. Hi. No, you didn't. She didn't give the answer yet. Did You can't just call in and win. You have to have the answer. You're fired, Sabrina. I can't believe what I went Sabrina. through. Sabrina. Okay. Anyway, the country that borders Ghana is the Ivory Coast. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yay! 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 All right, Laura, we're going to bring you a t shirt. Yes, and yes. it's your birthday week, too, so oh, you get Laura, a t shirt. Happy birthday. You get a cool t shirt. Wonderful. Oh, Laura, happy birthday. I'm so excited. Oh, okay. great. Well, thank you, Laura. Thank you. All Laura. right, we'll see you this week, and we'll bring you your t shirt. And you. happy birthday, Missy. Happy birthday. <laughs> All right, so bye bye. 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 Okay, I'm grateful for I'm grateful for the close of a really great birthday week and that it's July 1st and it's a day of firsts and this has been a great way to open the month. Yes. And I'm so excited yeah. that I have something really excited to read and we have great. a new project on the air each week talking about what's going on in the book. Oh, oh that's, that's right. Great. Oh, that's right. That's we do great. have a new project. So, all right. Yes. So I'm grateful for that. And I can oh. call in if you want. Yeah, you yes. can. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, I'm just grateful for someone like Quay, who writes about countries that I may or may not go to, but I go to, <laughs> but I go to in the in the book. Absolutely. So yeah. armchair know, travel armchair is the best. Armchair traveler. Oh, armchair I, traveler. I never heard yes, of that. Yes. Yeah, the armchair traveler from the accidental tourist. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I did hear about that. Yes. Yeah. So, and, so, uh, but I love this, and that's one of the reasons I love reading. And this is really a wonderful, wonderful travel and Thank read. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Great. All right. Well, and we I'm are. Grateful. Our, uh, our listeners. And yes, we're grateful for all of you for and listening. You <laughs> and we're grateful for you, BN. And we're grateful for Kurt and for John being here engineering us and taking care of it. And for so Quay. we just want to remind you that I'm we nice are Kurt here every single Tuesday <laughs> night at 7 o'clock. You can find us. You can email us at info at the amazing hour radio show dot com. Uh, follow us on Twitter. You can follow us individually. You can follow us all individually. You can follow The Amazing Hour. And you can uh, find us on uh, Facebook and on YouTube for all of our previous uh, our, uh, the airings of our show. So we're good to go. Thank, Thank you, you all for listening. And we'll see you next week. You're amazing. I am amazing.